Hello, this is going to be an extensive video looking at Theta Z1 stitching workflows. So this tutorial is gonna look at three parts of a Z1 workflow. The first being a regular DNG raw, so an exported image. The second is going to be uh, for when you're on both sides of the lens, so you'll have your camera on a tripod and you'll take a photo while you're on this side and another photo while you're on the other side and you'll put it together to kind of erase yourself out. And the third will be how to work with bracketing and creating HDR from uh, DNG raw images or JPEG images from the Z1. So before we get started, uh, for anyone who's a little more intermediate um, or who just kind of wants to know the exact workflow I'll follow, the way it's going to work is I'm going to take my files from the camera, uh, transfer them to my laptop using the Theta transfer app, whatever. Um, and then I'm gonna plop them onto Photoshop to remove the tripods. And then I'll export them as TIFF files, import them into Lightroom, stitch them using the Theta stitcher, do the color grading and export it like that. This is basically the workflow that will follow with all of them. The only difference being that with the two sides of the camera, I will also do the, the cropping in Photoshop. Um, and with the HDR, I will actually skip Photoshop altogether and come back to it at the end to remove the tripod. Um, and I'll probably explain that in the tutorial anyway. I should add with this video and any other future video I may or may not post uh, that I'm not particularly an expert. This is just how I do things and how I think things work best. So take it like that. All right, so once you've plugged your Z1 in, you can see all your files in the file transfer Mac. Um, I, I think if you're using a PC, this might be slightly different, but essentially just choose the images that you want and uh, drag them into your computer. All right, so this one is going to be when you're on two different sides of the camera and you want to put them into an image where you're not there. Um, so here I have an image where I'm in a square, I'm on the left here, and then on this, I'm on the right. So we're gonna basically put these together. Um, and for that, you just need to pop them right into Photoshop, which I have here. So just drag them in and Photoshop will give you this. Um, the, the thing with this is you can actually do the color grading here, but I prefer to do it in Lightroom because it's a bit easier, I find, uh, if it's in a, a rectangular image when when you are editing it and when it's fisheye it's just it's a bit difficult at least for me um, so I generally prefer to only pop them into Photoshop do the manipulation and then do the actual color editing in Lightroom um, so in Photoshop again yeah you're here on the left and here on the right um, it doesn't matter which image to which image you take it it's really up to you but you're just gonna grab your free transform tool and take the part where you're not in it again in either one of the images right click it and say transform selection and you're gonna drag that to the middle and you'll get this um, guideline it can be green whatever color yours is um, that'll show you that you're right in the middle of the image if you don't have these guides you can go to view and enable them there um, and once you've done that, just press enter and then select your move tool. And there you go. So you just have that, drag it into the other image, make it sit right there where the guides should show you that it's centered uh, in, in both axes. And there you go. You're technically done at this point. Um, what I would do, if, especially if you're going to want to remove the tripod now, what I would do is merge these two layers so that it's a bit easier when you're when you're using the clone stamp tool. So in this part, I'll just show you how to um, delete the tripods if, if that's what you want to do. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to select your tripod using the lasso tool. And once you've selected it, you're going to right click and click fill. And here you'll have uh, contents, content aware fill, and you'll say okay and it will nicely, nicely remove it for you. If you have any artifacts left and it just doesn't look perfect, then press S, um, and that's known as the clone stamp tool. And what you'll do is, if you hold down option, um, he sees that's going to be alt, and you'll just select a part you wanna use as a sample. So I'll use here, and then you'll come over it. You can make your brush size a bit bigger if you right click. Then yeah, you can just clean this up like that. And if you go over this line, don't worry, because once um, once the stitcher stitches it, those parts are removed anyway. Um, this looks good to me. 
and we'll quickly do it on the left side. So here you'll grab your lasso tool, you'll select this roughly, right click, fill, content aware, okay, it looks good. I'm just going to clean it up a little here and here we go. Yeah, you're done. So you have your image ready to go into Lightroom now. Uh, you're gonna hit save, and this is an important part. Um, you're gonna hit save. One thing is not to change the naming that comes off camera. Uh, this is a little bit of a trick with the Z1 that if you change the names uh, that, that come off the camera, it won't work. Um, even if it's the same names uh, with the suffix and so on, it won't work. So just keep the same format. If you have changed it already, um, don't worry, it's not an issue. Um, all you have to do is kind of just copy this format from any other photo you've taken. Um, and the numbering um, and all that doesn't actually matter. So it's not that the Z1 is trying to match it with the metadata, it's just looking for this um, Rico naming for some reason. Um, so once you have that original name, to the right side of it, you can um, name it anything. So I'll just call it edited. Make sure you don't use any punctuation um, and any kind of special characters there. It also messes up if you do that. Um, and make sure that you save it as TIFF. So this is the this is the little trick um, that if you were to save this as anything else, so if you were to go with Photoshop Raw or um, anything else, it basically wouldn't work with the stitcher later on. Um, and also you want it as TIFF because you keep as much data as you can with a TIFF file that you can actually do the colors later on in Lightroom and you're not losing the, the data and the ability to you know change the finer parts of it. So it's really important that you save it as a TIFF file. Uh, once you save it, it'll give you this dialog box. And here, um, it doesn't really matter what you select here. Um, you just basically shouldn't change it. Um, just make sure that there is no image compression. You really don't want to compress the image. Uh, and if you have a different preference with this, um, it's it's fine. I think RLE is the best layer compression in this case because we're still going to edit the photo. Um, and yeah, go ahead and save it. It'll say including layers will increase file size. Doesn't matter. Say OK. And there you go. So now you have this edited TIFF image in your folder and you're just going to quickly pop that onto Lightroom. Once you've imported your image into Lightroom, so you're going to go to develop. And here, before you do anything, um, I usually like to stitch it first. And that's this is a matter of personal preference. Um, I prefer to stitch it first so that, again, it's easier to edit the whole image. Um, but you can keep it as a fisheye, um, do the colors, and then pop it into the stitcher if you want. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the stitcher first. Um, and here, if you didn't edit it, then just edit the original. Unless you're doing some really important client's work, then you can edit a copy um, just in case. But usually, I, I just go for how I want it. Okay. So the stitcher, um, this is kind of up to you how you want to do it. If you if you want to change anything here, usually um, it's it's on point, so I don't change much. Uh, you can just do the position adjustment to make sure that the center of the image is uh, well where you want the center to be. But yeah, this this looks good to me. I'm just gonna stitch it real quick. So there we go, our image is stitched together, all nice. Um, so at this point, you would do the color grading, um, which I'm not gonna do here. Uh, that, that would be a whole thing on its own, but you would do the color grading and you would then export it as you wish. And the nice thing about this workflow is that you can basically export it wherever you want and in whatever name you want because you already did the stitching. You don't need to put it in the same folder with the same name and all that at this point. You can just export it wherever and you also have a little more flexibility with your format. So um, if you had used the stitcher, it would only allow you to export in JPEG and TIFF. In this case, it will allow you to do uh, Photoshop, DNG and original, which is DNG files as well. Um, so yeah, export that and you're done. All right, if you're still here, thank you for watching. Thank you for coming this far. Um, this was a extensive tutorial on how to do different kinds of Z1 workflows. Uh, we talked about how to do regular DNG raw photos to a final product. We talked about how you can stand on different sides of the lens and stitch them together. And of course, we talked about how to create HDR images with your, with your DNG RAWs from the Z1. This workflow would probably fit a lot of 360 cameras and a lot of um, 360 workflows. Uh, it just changes 
a little from from camera to camera so this is just specifically for the z1 but please leave a comment down below if you are interested in other workflows or any other kind of tutorials of this kind and thank you for watching please subscribe if you liked it like if you liked it and i'll see you maybe